Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where, after many years of low-key wanting to get my hands on one, I finally got animated lockdown. This is a figure that I've been hearing great things about, aside from the wrists, which we'll get into. I always felt like the Revenge of the Fallen one was good enough for me, but I've kind of had my love of animated rekindled recently, so, uh went back and started getting some other figures that I've been meaning to get for a long time, like Lockdown here, I got Oil Slick recently, uh, Earth Mode Ratchet. I'm not going to be collecting a bunch of animated stuff. I don't even know if there's anyone else I want to get from animated right now, aside from Black Arachnia, but it's just kind of nice to start finally filling those gaps in my collection, you know? And yeah, animated Lockdown. I kind of understand what all the fuss is about now. I'm still partial to Revenge of the Fallen Lockdown because he pushes that weirdness factor even further, but I do understand why Animated Lockdown is so beloved. I mean, for starters, this vehicle mode is pretty awesome. It's a big, brutish-looking muscle car with spikes, but it's a little bit... it feels weird to say this, but it's a little bit more reserved than the Revenge of the Fallen figure. The two of them share some very similar design cues, like the pipes along the sides, though the angles are different for animated versus Revenge of the Fallen. The big chunky engine sitting at the top, the kind of wedge shape in the front with the spikes, spikes along the top, though the arrangement's different. But this one definitely feels more muscle car. Revenge of the Fallen Lockdown is uh, a bit more intense, let's say, compared to the animated version. But I feel like the overall slightly more simplistic design of animated Lockdown works better. It works in its favor. I love the angles of this car, in particular what's going on in the front, with how all these different angles just kind of come together and meet and point towards that little silver tip right in the front of the fender. There's some nice detail around the back, and I think the only thing that's really missing from the back is it looks like there are exhausts back there that maybe could have been painted, but whatever. And yeah, there's not a ton else on this guy. I like that the spikes on top of the window are painted in silver so they stand out really nicely. The kind of deep purple clear plastic that they have for the windshield and side windows and the, I believe they used, maybe they used red for the taillights and the uh, headlights, but that looks really good and that bright green in the front pops really nicely on the black. It does make the back of the car feel a little bit plain, in particular where you can see what's supposed to be the uh, back window. It's just black plastic, but it's barely a problem. I feel like when you're looking at this car, the lack of a painted back window is not something you immediately notice. Size-wise, I feel like the vehicle is about standard deluxe size, really. It's uh, maybe a little bit wider in back, but not substantially so. It's not any taller, not any longer, really. The mass distribution is a little bit different because unlike, say, downshift, it's not so much a block on wheels. It's got more of a slope in the front, and then it comes up again because of that big engine. But yeah, it's a pretty decent size. Lockdown's transformation is very straightforward. It's a little bit more difficult going into the vehicle mode than it is going into the robot mode just because figuring out how to line up the arms when you're tucking them into the back of the vehicle mode can be a little bit tricky. Not like it's a problem, it's just figuring out the precise angles that all the pegs line up it takes a little bit of trial and error. It's really easy to shift things around, but it can be a little tricky. Going into robot mode, very straightforward. If anything, it's just getting the initial bit started where you have to get the front of the hood section kind of up past what becomes the hips. Clearances there are a little bit restricted. And now Vanilla Lockdown, yes, I have a cat now. Vanilla Lockdown is pretty cool. Um, I definitely prefer not Vanilla Lockdown, but this is fine. I think the colors and detailing are really nice. You definitely get a lot more color in robot mode than you did in vehicle mode. It's pretty nice, albeit obviously stylized silhouette, like that really, really chunky cone-shaped neck that tapers up into a head, and the kind of vaguely hoofish feet. I do like the asymmetry though, how they've got like a slightly different molding and deco on the different biceps and around the knees. I do wish they had pushed it a little further. From what I understand, the animation model actually does push it a little further, but it's a toy. I also like that there are some more subtle details to his design, like the, uh, uh... I also like that there are some more subtle details in there, like especially the forearms. There are these little hits of, like, a deep purple in the panel lining in there. 
which I think just looks nice. Also getting back to the asymmetry, I think the design of the legs is pretty cool too. I like the uh, differences from below the knees. As I said, I wish they did a little bit more with it, but that's yeah, fine. Now, I'm kind of sick of looking at Vanilla Lockdown, so I'm gonna adjust this. First off, I want to say uh, these are where the hands normally sit when you get this figure by default, and I did not like that, so I modified it so you can move the hands out more fully. Why the figure wasn't designed to do this in the first place, I don't know, because there doesn't seem to be any real logistical reason for it. The plastic that you have to carve out, and you do have to carve it out, it's not it doesn't seem to be load-bearing, it's not necessary for the transformation, so I just don't understand why it was designed like that. It is relatively easy to take out, but you can't disassemble the arm. At least not easily. Anyway, uh, so readjusting the hands definitely helps, but this is locked down. He needs his hook, so we're going to tuck his right hand back into his forearm, pull off this thing on his back, his little ant abdomen thing, fold out the hook, spin the top of the engine around, and this will just peg into his arm. And once it's pegged in, you can push down on the top of the engine to flip out the uh, little whatevers for the uh, EMP generator, I believe it's called, and that gives us proper lockdown, and this is very cool. I definitely think it helps having the hand adjusted properly, being able to do it properly. And I also like the hook hand. Another thing that I thought was kind of surprising is looking at photos and videos of this figure, the chunk that attaches to his forearm to give him the hook, it seemed like it might be kind of obnoxiously bulky, but in hand it does add some bulk, but most of that bulk is really coming from the EMP generator, so I feel like it's easy enough to ignore that added mass. And it also helps with the asymmetry because now he's got a hook hand and also there's some yellow on one side that's not anywhere else in the figure, so yeah, I think this works really well. Now looking at the head, as my first experience with Lockdown was Revenge of the Fallen Lockdown, I'm just gonna compare it to that, but basically uh, it's very reminiscent of that Lockdown. Again, with that kind of tapered neck, the big silver face, though he doesn't look as monstrous here. I like that the neck spikes are painted in silver, and that almost creates this line that goes down around the ends of the neck and out into those shoulder pads, and it carries those silver spikes all the way through. I also like how they gave him kind of like Lobo-looking face design with the uh, black streaks on the chin and eyes, and the purpley, burgundy-looking light piping that uh, it works well when he has light behind his head, and I feel like it's separated out enough from the silver face that it's fine even if it doesn't have light behind it. As for articulation, it's just a swivel, which is a shame. It would have been nice if it had a little bit more movement to it than that. The neck base can kind of wiggle up and down a little bit. The arms can do a full 360, but they're at kind of an angle, so you kind of have to adjust for that. It can go out not quite 90, but if you start moving the transformation joint, they can go really far up. You don't have a bicep swivel, but you can rotate the forearm at the ball joint. You get a elbow at that ball joint, but you also have a dedicated hinge that can work as an elbow to a point. It doesn't bend super far, I think it's mostly designed to bend backwards, but you can use that a little bit. You have a waist rotation, which the Revenge of the Fallen figure doesn't have. The legs can go forward, practically high kicking can go back, practically high kicking. They can go out, uh, not the full 90, but a pretty decent range. And there's also dedicated thigh swivel, which is really nice. The only thing that suffers is the knees. Those knees are not great. You get far below 90 degrees, and then the toes can go forward a bit and can go back all the way because of the transformation. Animated Lockdown is pretty decently posable. He is also pretty decently large. As I understand it, this guy came out as a deluxe. Vehicle mode, definitely deluxe, but he stretches out a lot. I was genuinely surprised when I put him next to Revenge of the Fallen Lockdown, because I expected Revenge of the Fallen Lockdown to be taller, but it's really not. And if you extend him fully, it's still kind of not that much of a difference between their heights. So yeah, Animated Lockdown gets very tall, and I absolutely appreciate that. And yeah, I don't really know what else I can say about it. It's just a, it is a really cool figure. I finally got to experience it firsthand and understand what all of the hype was about, because 
it is really good. It does some really fantastic stuff. And I mean, people have said this before, but I absolutely agree that the engineering for animated, in a lot of cases, is extremely impressive. The colors are great. I love the asymmetry. I wish they had pushed it a little bit more, but it's there. And I also appreciate how when you add the hook, it kind of pushes it a little bit further. I just wish those knees could bend a little bit more and possibly not break up the way they do when you bend them. But I absolutely do not regret finally getting my hands on him. I'm very glad I got him. I'm glad I did the hand mod. I wish you didn't have to. I think it's ridiculous. That's just such a weird design decision. I just don't understand why they would do that. Maybe there's some reason that I'm not thinking of. I don't know. But aside from the wrist gripe and the knee gripe, this is a fantastic figure. I still think I prefer the Revenge of the Fallen version over the animated version just because I like how out there the Revenge of the Fallen version goes, but I think this is also extremely good. I really do like animated lockdowns well, and I'm extremely glad I got him. And now I've got so many lockdowns, I actually have a dedicated lockdown section of the shelf. Granted, it's only three, but still. But I think I've talked long enough, so that is going to do it for animated lockdown. What do you all think of this guy? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. If you like this video or any of the other videos that I've done and you want to support the channel outside of watching the video in the first place, I do have a Patreon. It's a single $1 tier. It gets you early access to new videos. access to the occasional behind the scenes post or in progress post for like customs or something I might be working on. And eventually I'm hoping to start doing polls so patrons will be able to weigh in on stuff that I do on the channel in the future. With all that out of the way, thank you everybody for watching. And remember, art is more than meets the eye. And yes, I have a particular fondness for abstraction apparently.